I'm Ryan from Rocky Mountain Tesla, and today we're sharing the data because it's electrifying and because it's a road trip. And we're going to talk about some of the essentials that you need for a road trip, particularly three things I think you really should think about before starting a road trip. We're ready to go. Charging is complete. And of course, don't forget the dog, vitally important to the road trip. Also, as we are getting going and getting in the car here, I just wanted to point out that there is a really good article on a new favorite blog of mine, and it is in detail talking about some of these points. All packed up with room to spare. Before you start the road trip, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have all the apps. First of all, there's PlugShare, and PlugShare can help you find all the destination charging that's available throughout your route. Because not all routes are equal. Not all of them are along the Trans-Canada Highway here in Alberta. Uh, some of them are way off the route. We're going to Jasper, and we will need to rely a bit more on some destination chargers uh, for brakes along the way, especially because it's the standard range plus. But we'll see. We're going to also use a better route planner and that really helps you figure out and dial in exactly how much power you're going to have when you get to certain locations. The second point is planning. So using a better route planner or on the Tesla Model 3 or any Tesla, you can use the navigate feature and figure out the route. It looks like going to Jasper, we will get to Canmore with 17% supercharged there for close to an hour. And then it says we would get to Jasper Park Lodge with 9%. A better route planner gives you a really specific route and you can even add charging stops at different places along the way. For example, we might stop in Lake Louise or we might stop in, at Saskatchewan Crossing and add say 10% while we're taking lunch. Well, we made it to Canmore, but it's full. Tesla, we need more superchargers in Canmore. <sighs> right now, the trip planner on the Tesla is telling me that it'll be 50 minutes of charge time to get all the way to Jasper, but we still need to plan for some contingencies and those stops are in Lake Louise and possibly uh, Saskatchewan Crossing and I'll show you an example of what the plan looks like and what I'd be looking for to stop or not stop. So just to explain, using a better route planner, I know that we could stop in Lake Louise and top up to say 90% at a destination charger, and that would take just over an hour. So if the battery is at 75%, approximately where we are exiting to take the, the highway to Jasper, I don't think it's worth stopping in Lake Louise. And the next stop here is Saskatchewan Crossing. And if we were at 54% when we get there, there's really not a lot of need to stop and top up. Uh, arriving below 20% isn't ideal, but as long as the battery isn't sitting at that level for very long, it shouldn't be a big concern. Now, how do I know there is a place to charge in Saskatchewan Crossing? Well, I use the PlugShare app or website and I can find out exactly what's available right there. It'll tell me all the details, whether or not they're very good or not, what kind of charging rates that I can expect, and what the app I might need to use. And in this case, I don't need an app because it is a free destination charger provided by Sun Country. Well, it's almost there and it's really not worth it, especially when you're getting charged per minute. So we're going at 99%. Uh. It 
looks like we are not even gonna have to stop in Lake Louise, maybe not even in Saskatchewan Crossing. Just by driving the speed limit, we have been able to get an expected arrival percentage of 20%. The other thing you can look at is the energy graph and see in the trip meter if you're tracking to a, a better arrival, a better percentage of your arrival, you don't need to use those extra stops. Uh, again, we'll do a little update as we're arriving at Saskatchewan Crossing. good reason to go the speed limit. made it with 18%. That was even better than the original planned arrival. And all we really had to do was mostly drive the speed limit. Uh, but the last half of the route, we actually were driving a, a little bit above the speed limit. The final thing, that third thing, that really in some ways the most important thing, because we did arrive here with 18%, and we don't wanna be limping around, driving around uh, during our stay, trying to slowly get a charge with a, a wall outlet, that's destination charging. And we have it here at the Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge, as you can see in the little sign back there. So we can plug in and be charged every day. There are several charging stations throughout this property and in many different hotels. The only worry you might have is not being able to find one because there's too many electric cars charging. It's really as easy as one, two, three. First, get all the apps you need. Second, plan your trip, get backups, etc. Know what you need to do. And third, have a destination charging solution if you do not have superchargers nearby. Oh, and there's that other thing. Don't forget your dog. Also check out Plugged In's inaugural podcast, EV Traction. I joined Grant Gerke in talking about evaluating an EV purchase here in Canada and charging.